our chairperson of the Committee on Ministry, Joel Kruger, to give our uh, to give his calm report, annual report, which uh, was sent out to a lot of you earlier, but I think um, we're not going to bother to put that up on the screen. We'll just let Joel do it uh, orally. So, Joel, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, Nick, I just said, had one uh, uh, matter of order, I guess it would be. Um, do you have somebody who is taking minutes, acting as our clerk for today? No, but I we are recording this. Oh. Okay. We are recording this. So, so at some point, minutes will be shared? Say that again. At some point, minutes. At some point, minutes will be available or will be sent um, out? We will, we will try to share. Mary Angel said she'd be willing to take some minutes. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, hopefully everybody uh, received this report. Um, I'm not going to read it word for word, but we'll just go over some of the highlights. Um, number one, just want to say once again that it's always a pleasure and an honor to, to work with the group that is our Committee on Ministry for the Sunrise Association. Um, uh, the names of those on, on the committee right now are um, Reverend Tim Hall, Reverend Eric Kelly, Jack Lacey, Donna Beals, Margaret Fox, Kathy Woodside, Reverend Joel Krieger, that's myself, Reverend Susie Maxwell, and Reverend Kate Winters. So we have nine people on the committee. They uh, serve three-year terms. And uh, this coming fall, um, the class that will be departing, um, and I, uh, anyway, that would be a Reverend Tim Hall, Eric Kelly, and, and Jack Lacey. Uh, Jack has said he is going to be staying on for a second term, uh, but the other two um, will not be. And so this fall, uh, if anybody's interested, we will be looking for two more uh, people um, to serve on the Committee on Ministry. So you've got a few months to, to contemplate that and, and prayerfully consider it. Um, this year, we, uh, like, like most groups, have only met via Zoom. Uh, and this, this report is, is uh, covering the time period since last October, since our meeting in the fall. Um, uh, so we've been, since then, we've been meeting via Zoom and uh, looking forward to maybe in a, another month or two, uh, possibly trying to meet in person. We'll see how that goes. In terms of transitions, we had only one transfer in. That's um, a Reverend Joseph Schulte, who's presently the interim at Hammond Street in Bangor. And Joe uh, and his wife have joined the Castine Church. And um, after he is, uh, finished I, I guess he's not truly retiring because he said he may still want to do some some more interim work or some supply preaching that kind of thing but um, uh, they have joined or he, he has joined the uh, Sunrise Association he comes to us from the South Dakota Conference uh, Two Rivers Association we had no transfers out um, and no uh, changes of standing that, that we are aware of. Um, uh, Monica Giordano, who's pastoring the Millbridge Church, announced her retirement from Millbridge effective February 14th of this year. So um, they are presently in the process of trying to determine uh, how they want to move forward. Um, we had one uh, loss of life, uh, Irene McLeod Hall, uh, Reverend Tim Hall's wife, uh, passed away suddenly on February 17th. And uh, we've been keeping Tim and, and his family and the congregation there in our prayers. Um, then, in terms of our list of church calls and changes of uh, the churches within the association, I won't go through all of them, but just to lift up a couple, 
uh, First Congregational Church of Blue Hill called their new designated term pastor, Reverend Lisa Durkee, on January 1st. Um, we will be working on setting up an installation uh, for her. Um, we received uh, a nice note, or actually the conference received a note from the uh, members of the Callist Church, which has closed, uh, but they, um, if you'll take a look at that, we, I'm not going to read it, but the report um, shares what they did with, with some of their funds and their finances there after they closed. They did some really wonderful things there in, 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 in Calais. So it would be nice if you take a look at that, if you haven't already. Um, last fall, we had received a report that the Eastport Church uh, was closing, and um, uh, Kathy Woodside from the committee had reached out, and we received uh, a note from uh, Caitlin uh, Stellreck, the moderator at Eastport. Uh, they are not closing, uh, but they are without clergy, and uh, but they are continuing with, um, with the work of lay leadership, and um, and also uh, reaching out to uh, Douglas Dunlap part of the small church story project um, so they they are continuing to go forward so we celebrate celebrate them um let's see here Ells ellsworth uh continues with cynthia priam um ellsworth falls uh, ruth martin is there as acting pastor uh, she's another one that we still need to do an installation for. Um, of course, Han in Hancock, uh, TJ Mack, as you all know, will be um, will be installing her this afternoon. Uh, let's see here. Sandy Point continues with Steve Allspock. As we just heard earlier, uh, most of you probably heard Janet. Uh, Janet Adair Hansen is continuing at Sumsville Union Meeting House as, as their interim, but they have uh, voted on a, um, a profile and um, are nearing or getting further along in that, that all important search process. So congratulations, Janet, and, and the congregation there at Sumsville. Yeah. yeah. Um, a couple notes at the conference level. Uh, Reverend Deborah Jenks, who's been serving as our interim associate conference minister, will be stepping down at the end of May. Retiring. Oh, retiring, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess that's the, the, the proper word. Um, retiring, and so we congratulate Deb and thank her for all her work. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Yay, Deb. We um, uh, celebrate uh, Reverend Alexis or right, uh, she will become our full-time designated term associate conference minister uh, beginning, I believe, the final week of May. And so we look forward to meeting with her and, and to uh, share in her ministry among us. And then, of course, um, um, last September, uh, transitional minister, Reverend Jana Jensen. Jana, thank you so much for being with us here today. And we are uh, so happy uh, to be involved with, with you and your work with us uh, in the Sunrise Association and with the main conference. And um, let's see here. We currently have have really one active MID member in discernment. That's Hannah Mon Mondrak. Mondrake. And I saw Hannah earlier. I don't wherever you are, Hannah. Uh, thank you again. We are very much encouraged by uh, the pro progress she's been making and um, uh, very, very in, uh, trying to encourage her as much, much as possible. Just a couple of other things that the Committee on Ministry have been working on. Um, we've uh, uh, set up teams within the committee, uh, one uh, MID oversight team 
consisting of Donna Beals, Reverend Tim Hall, and Reverend Susie Maxwell, a church visitation and care team, that's Margaret Fox, Jack Lacey, and Kathy Woodside, and then the clergy care and oversight team, myself, Reverend Susie Maxwell, and Kate Win Reverend Kate Winters. Um, in this way, trying to break it up, we're, we're, we're hoping we can kind of deal with, we, we've discovered more and more how much more work there is I I involved with this committee and, um, and how much we still need to start doing that we haven't been doing. So um, that's an ongoing uh, process. Uh, I want to mention the uh, Sunrise Association Scholarship Fund. Kathy Woodside uh, has kind of updated that for us. And um, that's something that's available for individuals who are enrolled in the conference or association approved program of theological education or coursework uh, related to Christian leadership. And um, so those funds are available for those of you who are interested. Uh, working on the Sunrise Association Church Directory. Um, forms were sent out, I believe, earlier in the year. Uh, the team hasn't received a whole lot of feedback, so I would encourage all of you uh, who have, uh, whether moderators or pastors, uh, leadership in the churches, please um, take a look. If you, if you don't think you received or if you don't know where you put uh, those forms, get in touch with Kathy, Kathy Woodside, and uh, she can uh, send you again those forms. Basically, they're informational forms. We're just trying to gather um, information, contact information for church offices, pastors, uh, leadership of the church, delegates, so we can kind of know, you know, which, which people to contact at churches if, if we have a need to. Um, Kathy put out a nice a Sunrise Association digital wor worship directory uh, earlier in the year too. That went out to try to assist some of the small churches or any of the churches that um, uh, weren't able to, to continue with worship, uh, didn't quite have the ability to do um, online kind of things. And so a number of our churches, Kathy, how many were there? Were there like 12? 10, 10 or 12? Yeah, I think there were about 12, yeah. 12 different and, churches that yeah. offered information on their online services and, and made those available for anybody to, to uh, join in with them. So I thought that was very, uh, very well done. Um, one of our hopes, once we are back in person uh, um, gathering, we our intention is to start doing some local church visitation where members of the Committee on Ministry might visit a congregation, possibly a Sunday morning or another time, or just to gather with them and have, have some uh, discussion and conversation about how things are going and what, what the Committee on Ministry might be doing to, to help and assist them. For a long time, I think many of us would probably say that uh, the connection between the association and the churches has been has been meager, um, partly because there's so much to do to begin with uh, with the committee. But but we really feel that it's important we start uh, having more um, connection between the churches and the committee, and between the churches uh, themselves, uh, one and another. So. Um, so watch for that in the, in the coming months, uh, hopefully when we'll be able to actually make some in-person visits. Uh, the clergy oversight team uh, is going to be sending out in the, probably the next couple of months the annual information reviews to our uh, clergy, to our pastors. Uh, this is important for us to uh, basically just continue to be updated as to um, where they are, what's happening, and uh, making sure that those who are active in ministry are keeping up with uh, the credentials, with boundary training, and those kind of things. Uh, then also, we've, we've got a uh, Sunrise Association clergy group that has been gathering. We've, uh, the last few months, we've been meeting via Zoom. And um, that's been uh, 
very positive. I, I think we've had some good numbers of clergy that have, have joined together. And it's basically a social uh, gathering. We get together and just talk about things. Sometimes it's related to church, but oftentimes not. And uh, so to all of the clergy and their, their spouses, uh, we encourage you to take part in that. We look forward to going back to the restaurants. Yeah. Yeah, once we can meet in person again, yeah, we, we, uh, we started by gathering and, and going to different restaurants and having a meal together. And so that's what we hope to get back to uh, later in this year. Okay. So I think that pretty much covers the report from the Committee on Ministry. Um, any of the, the committee members, anything else you want to add? Uh, Joel, I just wanted to say that the, the uh, church contact forms are starting to trickle in. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's good news. So we'll, we'll, we're, our goal is to try to have a directory together for you by our fall meeting. So the sooner we get that information, the sooner we can make that happen. So. Kathy, could you also say anything about the conference website and how we'll have information posted there? Okay, well, the conference website is being updated as we speak, um, so it's a work in progress. Um, Jonna and and Deb may want to speak to that as well, but um, so if you go to the conference website, it may look a little wonky, but it's it is every day there's more new things happening. So just, you know, hang in there with us. Um, so there is an area on the conference website now that speaks to um, associations. And right now it is not populated a great deal with information, but our hope is that rather than our having our own website for the Sunrise Association, primarily because we don't have anybody to do it, um, to to put it together or to, um, um, what do I want to say, kind of be the webmaster for that. Um, it made more sense for us to populate the conference website with our Sunrise Association information. So the con idea is that, you know, we will have like um, all the committees um, will have their representatives there their names and their contact information. We hope to have our bylaws, um, stuff related to the MID process, um, the scholarship form. Um, and I'm not sure what else might live there, but those are a few things um, off the top of my head that I can think of that we would have in that section. So anything that pertains to the association. One thing I am looking for, so if anybody has any of information, I'd love to have like a little short paragraph about the history of the Sun of the Sunrise Association. Um, I've been kicking around long enough to know a bit about it as a Hancock Waldo and then was part of the transition when um, we joined with the Washington Association. But um, I know there's some written history out there someplace and I would love to put my hands on that. So if anybody has anything like that, I would love to see that. Um, and then we could kind of edit it and, um, you know, add anything that's more recent that's that may not be part of that at this point. Um, Tim is holding something up. Tim, awesome. A little closer, Tim, a little closer. What do you have? This is a book that's called These Hundred Years. It's the, the first hundred years of the Hancock Association. Cool. Uh, and, and so I'll get this to you, Kathy. That would be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. Great. That's Thank a you. gift. Awesome. So There's a copy of it in Blue Hill as well. Awesome. Okay. That's great. Um, I don't know when it became the Hancock Waldo. So if anybody has that, that would be great. And then um, I do know when we joined with Washington so we can put that piece in but um, I think that's just really kind of cool to have the the um, a little bit of history about our association um, and I think that's it I think you know if there are things that you'd like to see on in this in the association section of the webs conference website um, you can let me know um, I'll put my um, I will put my email in the chat and uh, you feel free to reach out. 
Okay, thank you very much. Kat, uh, well, just one question. Um, Kathy, would that be an appropriate place and would it be possible for local congregations to post events that they're having on, on, on that kind of a site or not? You know, my first, my initial reaction is no. <laughs> and I think the reason for that is because you know, it's one more step that people have to go to to look for information. Um, you know, I encourage people to use the all conf conference email. Um, people seem to be hesitant to use that, but that seems to seems to be more all inclusive um, and covers um, happenings all over the state. So let's say that there's something happening in Cumberland. They're doing a Zoom meeting and they're inviting everybody. We could participate in that. So um, I think um, if you're trying to get a broader audience, I think the better place right for right now would be to post it on all conference e email. Um, and you just have to send an announcement to the conference office and they'll make that happen. Um, so that's what I would do for now, unless there's a, um, you know, there's going to be some other kind of um, um, like a uh, bulletin board thing on the website or not, but I don't know that at this point. So thank you, Joel. Joel, I wanted to thank you, Joel, for um, your report. That was, that was excellent. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Kathy. Kathy has been, uh, she is on the, the uh, Committee on Ministry. Um, for the association, but she has been helping us out as clerk since we right now are continuing to look for a clerk of the association. So thank you, Kathy. You're um, welcome. Yep. Um, I wanted to get into the vote because we're, we're starting to run out of time and I didn't want to miss that vote. Um, there's a common theme today uh, and that is ordained ministry. One of the things we do as an association is ordain candidates who are seeking uh, to, to be ministers, uh, pastors of churches, pastors and teachers. And um, that whole process begins when somebody who feels called to the ministry becomes a member in discernment, like Hannah, who is a member in discernment in our association. And that is a process and part of that process is to have a psychiatric or psychological, I should say, psychological evaluation. And that psychological evaluation, the cost of that is shared by the candidate, one third by the candidate's congregation and one third by the association. Uh, the coordinating council is recommending the same thing for a criminal background check, which is another thing that is required uh, on the path to ordination. And so the vote today uh, is to, would be this, that the MID candidate, his or her local congregation and the association each pay one third of the criminal background check fee. And Joel, would the committee on ministry make that motion? And then we can have any questions. Uh, yes, we would. Uh, Tim, do you wanna make that motion? Well, sure, you actually have that uh, motion in writing that was sent out as an attachment to the meeting. So Ooh. we would say the, um, what I can do is I, I don't have I don't have the exact words of the motion, but I have the back I have that document. Let me share the screen and put that up. Great. So uh, the motion is that the members of the Sunrise Association agree to a three-way covenant with members in discernment, the Sunrise Association membership, and the MID sponsoring church to each pay one third of the cost for the MID's criminal background check. Thank you. That. I'm gonna have Mary Angel get that down as you worded it, Tim. Um, we don't need a second because it comes from the Committee on Ministry. So I am going to ask if there are any questions. This is Janet Adair Hansen. I just wanna observe that a couple of years ago, at least, the cost was $150 
So what we're talking about is $50 each. Thank you very much, Janet. Any other questions? <laughs> I'm going to give you a, a chance just to read that what I uh, what was sent out earlier. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the gallery view because I want to get a feel for how many people are voting. So I'm going to stop the screen sharing. All right, I like this. And. Uh, are we ready to vote? Yes. How, how are we voting? I think it'd be easier just to have people raise their hands. Mm -hmm. And please keep your hands raised because it's going to take a while to. Uh... How will you know if you have everyone? Yeah. Oh, are we voting? Yeah. Is it time to vote? Okay. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Get them way up there so I can see them. I would say that it is it has passed just by seeing the major, vast majority have voted yes. Um, I will say how many opposed? Okay, it is a vote. Thank you very much. Nick, I'd just like to observe if people don't understand that I'm an interim pastor. My membership is back in New York and I can't vote. So okay. please don't, please understand that, that I'm not raising my hand because I can't. <laughs> Thank you. For we got sharing. it. <laughs> yes. And I realize that not everybody is a delegate, but I think people who voted are delegates. And so I appreciate that. Okay. Um, we also included in the mailing a document which talks about the MID or the member discernment process when someone wants to be feels called and wants to start that process. Um, Tim, did you want to share anything about that document? We don't require a vote, but um, I was wondering, Tim, if you wanted to share anything about that. Sure. Let me go quickly that uh, we, we have had a member, uh, discernment process for authorized ministry for many years. It was 60 pages long. It was adopted by the Hancock Waldo Association and then updated for the Sunrise Association. And now we have the new manual on ministry that came out from Mesa at the national level. And we put our uh, discernment process more in line with that. We don't have to do everything exactly the way they say but we're bringing up with best practices and whatnot. When you look at the document, you'll see several times, you'll see parentheses uh, next to statements. And those parentheses refer to pages in the brand new uh, manual on ministry, if you want to look up for more reference there. So we've gone from 60 pages to five. Uh, and one of the reasons that we voted on the uh, payment for the background check is the background check used to be something that wasn't done until right at the very end of the process uh, when the MID was approved to put together a profile. It was only then that a background check was done. And uh, with the recommendation of MESA, we, we realized that that should be part of the assessment right up in the front part of that process. And that's why that has been moved there and why we uh, moved to uh, get some financial assistance for that. Anyone have any questions? That's it, Nick. Tim, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, at this time, I invite, we have a guest today, um, our interim, our transitional conference minister, Reverend Jonna Jensen, and either she or Deb, uh, I've invited to share a little bit about the main conference, any news that you'd like to share or just greetings. Jen, Jonna. I, I do have a little bit of news and I'm going to go first because um, there are actually three associations in the main conference meeting this afternoon. And I'm wandering in and out among them <laughs> as well. Um, the first word anytime I speak is always thank you. Thank you, Saints of the Sunrise Association. Thank you for the radiance and faithfulness of your ministries, not only in your individual congregations, but together.
together. It, it, it is, it's a joy to be a partner with you. The next thing I want to say is a heartfelt, heartfelt, heartfelt thank you to our retiring interim conference minister, the Reverend Deb Jenks. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Deb has served the main conference with faith and wisdom, with a great heart for our congregations and pastors, for the holy work of our association leaders and association committees on ministry. Uh, Deb has, I don't know if the word is juggle or squash. <laughs> she has juggled and squashed very full-time needs into a part-time ministry. And she has served among us in a season of significant change and challenge. And the main conference board of directors is at work planning a farewell celebration for that. So stay tuned for that announcement. Um, the Reverend Alexis Fuller Wright will be joining us on May 25th for some overlap brain sharing uh, with, with Deb and with me. Um, her portfolio, and you'll notice as, as Alexis comes on board, our portfolios will shift a little bit. Um, Alexis will watch over all the congregations in the main conference that are served by part-time ministry. And she will be curating and blowing you your mean members. Full time ministry. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> I'm still Jana, right? And it's Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> Alexis is going to watch over the congregations who are served by full time ministry and curate culture of generosity for all our congregations. Um, and Alexis will also be watching over the holy work of Pilgrim Lodge. And then my work will shift a little bit to watch over, help me Deb, to watch over the congregations served by part-time ministry and to, uh, alongside that work, curate culture of call. Because uh, as you know, the, the traditional search and call process in the United Church of Christ serves full-time congregations well enough. And for part-time ministry, we need to be more creative and to do some exploring there. A couple of announcements. General Synod is coming in July, and you all can come because it's virtual. Um, because uh, the United Church of Christ goes all the way from Maine to Hawaii, uh, we have some time zone, some interesting time zone um, issues. And so for, for we in Maine, this is going to be a late afternoon, evening kind of event. And for the saints in Hawaii, they will be doing it at breakfast time. Um, General Synod workshops are going to be offered and then also recorded and available for a time uh, from July 7th through 10th. And the worship and business sessions begin on Sunday, July 10th. There's some date wrong here. I know that we begin business. I think I'm, um, well, I guess this probably is right. Sunday, July 10th, the business and worship gathering begins and it concludes a week later on Sunday, July 18th. The registration cost for visitors is $100, and that's a lot less than it would cost any of us to go to um, General Synod on site. So I hope that many of us will take advantage of this. You can watch both the pastor's notes that I send and our ACE for, for registration links. And the annual meeting of the main conference is going to be two events, not one, but two, on uh, on Saturday morning, October 23rd, we'll gather for an online, a virtual annual business meeting at the main conference. And then on Saturday, November 6th, if large gatherings are possible from our lips and hearts to God's ears, we are going to be having a Super Saturday learning event in person at Waterville. And there will be workshops and panels and opportunities to see folks we haven't seen in a good long while. So please do save those two dates. Donna, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Deb, did Deb want to add something to that or? Uh, a couple things, yes. Uh, first, thank you all for, um, for your enthusiasm and work and participation through this pandemic time and this transition time in the main conference. It's been a great honor and privilege and pleasure to serve as your part-time 
interim <laughs> associate <laughs> conference minister. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so thank you all. And thank you all for your support in that. I just wanted to add a couple more announcements um, um, related to MESOM. Um, to, to let you know that, that MESOM is offering a couple of June intensive experiences. And as Ron has shared with us on staff to think of the summer intensive, not so much as an intensive course as a retreat experience. And the focus is, is contemplative leadership in times of change, building resiliency. And it's offered in partnership with the Shalem Institute. And it will be led by Dr. Margaret Benefield and Ron Bard together and that will be June 8th through the 11th online. And information about that is, is I think in, was sent out in the ACE or will be sent out. The registration information is on the conference website, except that you have to kind of look for it because it's under MESOM, um, the MESOM tab. And um, so I encourage you to to consider that and to register for that. Um, it, it should be a really good experience. It's being offered nationwide, not simply through the main comp with the main conference folks. Um, also related to MESOM, um, there will be two one day classes offered in July on, on, on two consecutive Mondays. Um, uh, storytelling on um, storytelling. Um, I, I can't remember the exact name of it, but um, but Abby Lynn Haskell is going to be offering one day courses on storytelling as as a ministry and discipline for our ministries in our congregations. So that is being offered uh, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday, June. July 12th, and then again on Monday, July 19th at Pilgrim Lodge. So it will be in-person events. Um, and then related to Pilgrim Lodge, as you may know, Pilgrim Lodge has, will not be offering the traditional week-long camp experiences this summer, but will be offering um, what's being called day pass, experiences uh, that can happen. I think it's Friday, Saturday, and Sundays during the summer, and there'll be uh, places to register for that and sign up for individuals, for family groupings, for church groupings. So um, be stay tuned for all of that information. I can't think of anything else. It's great. Oh, uh, Kate. Just want to say that at our church this morning, the title topic of conversation was, when is Deb Jenks coming back? We miss her. <laughs> so very soon. We're soon excited. and very soon. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Even though I live across the street. I, when know. I, can... I know. I know. You've been working too hard. <laughs> That's it for the conference. Looks like Nick froze. Well, I see that guests for the installers are already signed by. That we um, that we adjourn as a association assembly at the end of the installation service. Anybody willing to make that motion? Yeah. Okay. Second. Oh, I well. All those in favor, I was please. Making, <laughs> I was just going to say something. Go ahead, Deb. Ah, uh, John had to leave, but somebody needs to be alert to readmit her during during the installation service. I don't know who's okay. the the administrator. Uh, I'm a co-host okay. too, so okay. 
So just be on the lookout for Jonna to come back because she has a role in the installation service. All right. Everybody in favor of adjourning to the end of the installation, please raise your <laughs> hand. And... <laughs> I don't think anybody's opposed. So <laughs> it is a vote and I welcome you to stay for the installation service. You can stay right on this link. Um, it is almost 10 of, so the service will start at two o'clock. Thank you for coming to the spring meeting. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Gosh, every one of these is so different. Hi, Thayer. Welcome. Hi, hi Mary Angela. Hi, Sally. Hi, Nancy Lewis. I think I'm supposed to admit people, but I don't see it popping up yet. <laughs> it's not very well, after, after you admit them, I'm going to greet them. OK. I, our friend Thayer Fanasic, I think, is already here. Yes, I'm I'm on. I don't see me on the scroll, but I see your picture there. All right. Huh. Do you see anyone? I haven't seen me since the meeting. Mary Angela and Nick. I'm not sure if you're still co-hosts. Um, I made Jeff the host. He's the person running the slideshow. Yes, he. He, he is going to be running the slideshow, yes. Yes, but um, I'm... Maybe. There, now we have the whole panel. Yes. TJ, are you still going to have two um, Zoom cameras? You're muted. No, we only have one. You're going to have one, okay. Um, is Mike Summer also going to be in the sanctuary with Pat or no, not? No, Mike is, is at home. home. Okay. Did, did right, you see you. a text from me in the last 30 minutes? I, I did. That's why I was curious about Mike because you said okay. Pat would be there. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I was banished to home. Hi, Pam. <laughs> see, Pam, greetings. And Dennis Doucette, greetings to you. Thank you. And there. Benizic, yeah, I'm here. And Jeff and Kathy, Margaret Fox, Mike, hello. Keith and or Kate and Joel. And Cynthia and Nancy. 
And I haven't seen Keith Bowie in a long time. This will be nice. He's not in his chair at the moment. Susie and Greg Maxwell. Boy, this is getting to be a nice crowd. Reverend George, Lynette George. Linda Smith, Kathy Woodside. Wow, the whole, whole family's here. That's nice. Most of us. Most of us. I see some names without faces yet. Imagine all the different places where we are right now. That's amazing. All come together. Need a way to glue my glasses up so I can look out of the lower half. Greetings to that one, too. <laughs> um, Sally's iPad, are you Sally Knapp? Yes. Could um, Do you mind if I change your name to be Sally Knapp? Because I need to pin you so that I can find you when you have a speaking part. I would be uh, happy for you to do that. OK. I'm, I'm illiterate, so I, I don't <laughs> touch anything. <laughs> I'm tired of my last name being iPad. <laughs> well, right, right now you're selling app, so we're good. Thank you. Um, is Kathy McGlink McGlinky on? McGlinchy, she's right next. There's Kathy. Hi, I'm going to pin you so I can find you later. Um, Pam Shelberg, is there is, I see Pam. Hi, Pam. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pin you so that you stay put. I know about Mike. I've already got him. Patrice Alexander. Hello. Is that you, Patrice? Hi there. Hi. Pin you. I'm going to add your last name to the to your thing just so that I can find you later easier. Okay. Okay. Alexander, just like a normal, right? <laughs> Nothing. Fun. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me. Pam Shelberg. There's Pam. Hi, Pam. You're already pinned. Okay, great. Um, Nick Davis. Here. Are, are you the Nick that's also a co-host? Am I going to what? Are you also a co-host? Oh, no, that... I am, yes. I, I wanted to make sure we, we let um, Jonna Jensen in later on in the service. She has to be away right now. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I just I just want to pin you so that I can find you when I need you. Okay. Does it um, hurt? Does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully only, a little, only on, a little bit. Nick. Depends on what kind of lifestyle you lead. Oh, okay. Um, but I can't. <laughs> I should be I can't Nick, Nick, Nick and M A. It says. Mary Angela. Right. Mary Angela. Okay. I'll find you yet. <laughs> All right, how about um, Linda Smith? Is Linda here yet? Yes, yeah. she is. Linda's yeah. here. She's here. Oh, there's Linda. Hi, Linda. Thank you hey, for waving. I appreciate that. And um, Lynette George? Yeah, she's here. Hi, Lynette. Thank you. Joel Kruger? Yes. Joel and Kate are both right there. We, we pronounce Joel. it Krieger. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, okay. that's okay. Joel Krieger. <laughs> we 
We're just going to call you Joel so that. Okay. And how about then I'm looking for Kate Winters? Right next to Joel. Well, maybe on your screen, but my screen's all topsy turvy. Oh, we're no, on the same no, picture. We're on one screen. Oh, that's why you say that. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. And then um, John is coming back in, and Deborah Jenks already have. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's everybody. I'm going to stop talking and let you greet. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, Pam. Hey, Beth. How's Wisconsin? It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good, although it makes me feel tender hearted to see so many old friends from Maine. Yeah. The nice we'll be part out is there in a few weeks. Oh, yeah. Who, who will be out here? Joel and I are coming out in a few weeks. Yeah. I'm Kate. Yeah, I see you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys stressing about Aaron Rodgers or not? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Causing some trouble, is he? Yeah. Heartache. Pam, is, is not to go on too long about it, but um, is, is something definite in the wind? I've heard rumors, but I haven't. That's all, it's all rumors. Oh, OK. <laughs> Oh, gee. <laughs> well, I wanted to greet David and Cindy Wilds and Jennifer Ging Gingras, Gingras, Deb Jenks and the Maxwells, Beth Haynes. And there's our secretary, Vicki, and you all know what she's been through to be here today. Mm -hmm. Donna, Laurel. Barbara, Elizabeth, wow, another Elizabeth, Tim Hall, Jerry Gregerson, oh, and Catherine Thompson, hey, Catherine, show us your face, it's good to see you. Got two more pages. Janet. There's Catherine. Yeah, it's almost okay. There's Joe. I don't know if Lisa. Lisa, who? Oh, it's not here. <laughs> I'm going to disappear for just 30 seconds here. Hi, sorry for the intrusion. This is um, Jeff again. So somebody from the Sunrise Association will have access to the cloud recording um, for your distribution later. Is that right? Did I hear yes? Yes, Jeff. Okay. Thank you, TJ. You're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> this morning here in Pennsylvania, I got up early and the sky was really, really dark. And then up came the sunshine. And I mean, the sky was really looked like we were going to have a terrible storm. 
and up came the sunshine and gradually dissipated all that and it was spectacular and I thought that's that's TJ to us now <laughs> so it was very special for today for her from Pennsylvania Sally, should I um, wait for your lead to begin since it is two o'clock or shall we wait for TJ's lead or help me decide when to begin? You're the first one up, so. I'm the first one up, so yeah. do we know of anybody we're waiting for or should we? Is everybody in place to begin? Everybody except John who's gonna come back in later. Okay. So if you're so Jeff, what we normally do is you would ring the bells and then when they stop, then Sally will start. Okay, I'm gonna ring some bells. Bells. <laughs> Well, I'd like to welcome everybody that's here with us today. This is a very special occasion and um, ask that you be in a moment of prayer here. Oh God, who comes as the disturbing comforter, shattering the rigid preconceptions of our minds and hearts, give us the grace to welcome your coming, to trust beyond where we can see, to have hope in the midst of chaos, to learn from our mistakes, to accept your forgiveness, and to walk steadfastly in the way of gospel gladness. Amen.
and welcome. We are the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, Maine, and we are glad that you are here. In addition to welcoming our congregation both near and far, I'd like to offer a special greeting and thanks to the members of the Sunrise Association that are participating here today. Welcome all. It is a special day for our congregation. The installation of the Reverend Teresa Lynn Mack as our settled minister. I'm Kathy McGlinchey. I serve on the Board of Deacons here, but I'm especially proud of my participation as a member of the search committee that brought TJ to us as our settled minister. What a blessing to have found someone almost in our backyard that has brought such energy and enthusiasm to this position. TJ's first year with us was a real test in that it was necessary to find new ways to worship and for outreach during this difficult time of COVID. She passed the test with flying colors, I'm happy to say, bringing our congregation together in many ways to an even stronger place. And we're very grateful to her for that. There are many members of this congregation as well as the Sunrise Association and the main conference who have worked to make this day possible. You'll find most of their names in the bulletin. Thank you all for your help and participation. The message this afternoon will be delivered by Dr. Pamela Shelberg. Dr. Shelberg was TJ's New Testament Studies Professor at Bangor Theological Seminary from 2010 to 2013. When the school closed, they stayed in contact, having bonded as Green Bay Packers fans soon after meeting, uh, both having family ties in Wisconsin. TJ found that when studying with Pam, the scriptures are not simply read, they're experienced. TJ shared that Pam engages with her students in unique and memorable ways. She often opens class sessions with poetry or visual art to draw one into her subject matter. She makes it real. She makes it relevant. She makes it interesting. She makes it personal. She has a way of engaging all of one's senses, of opening minds and hearts to the insights, the beauty, and the truth of the scriptures. TJ has shared that she is thrilled that Pam accepted the invitation to be our guest preacher today, not simply for herself, but for all of you. Pam is an extraordinary teacher and TJ is grateful for the ways in which Pam brought the Bible to life for her, brought the scriptures into the 21st century as the living, breathing, inspired word of God. Thank you for being here, Pam. TJ also wishes to thank everyone that helped make this service possible today. In her own words, Thank you to all those in my congregation at Hancock UCC. Thank you to those in the Sunrise Association and thank you to those from the main conference staff. Each and every one of you helps to make this day special. And of course, a special thank you from TJ to her spouse, Pat, who makes every day special for her unending love and support on this journey they call life. Thank you, TJ. We here at the Union Congregational Church are so very happy that you're here. Please be joined with me responsibly in the hope of worship. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Spirit frees us to humbly serve one another in love. The Spirit frees us to love our our neighbors as ourselves. The Spirit of the law is love. The I invite you to join me in the passing of the piece. We'll do American Sign Language. Also with you. Illumination by Merle Shane. It is better to light candles than to curse the darkness. It is better to plant seeds than to accuse the earth. The world needs all of our power and love and energy. And each of us has something that we can give. The trick is to find it and to use it. To find it and to give it away so that there will always be more. We can be lights for each other. And through each other's illumination, we will see the way. Each of us is a seed, silent promise, and it is always spring. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine.
New Testament reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. It's the part where Jesus visits Martha and Mary, the sisters of his friend Lazarus. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care about <clears throat> that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. First, let me say thank you for the very generous introduction and welcome extended to me by Kathy and TJ. I remember meeting TJ 12 years ago, who with no small amount of confusion then was beautifully obedient to her growing awareness that there was inexplicably a new fullness of purpose to which she was being invited. She was obedient to that awareness to the demands of the biblical and theological studies that fed it, and to the processes which brought her to your place there in Hancock, Maine, where I know she is living into that promised fullness, and I have no doubt the people of the Union Congregational Church are as well. TJ was a part of an incredibly special cohort of students, several of whom are in attendance today, 
They were simply the most magical group of people I ever taught or studied with. And to have seen how their ministries and lives have unfolded over the past decade has been a wonder. To have been invited to give a message today on this occasion for a former student and a dear friend is a privilege and a great joy. In a pre-pandemic context, this service of installation would have occurred very close to the start of Pastor TJ's ministry at Hancock. The energy would have been all aspiration and promise. It would have been then an affirmation of a covenant by which all of you, TJ, the people of Union Congregational Church and all the members of the Sunrise Association, a covenant by which all of you had determined to take your first steps forward together. As you sanctified this covenant, you would have been marking the very beginning of a relationship, the launch of a newly configured ministry together. It would have been more like a wedding. Yes, there would have been a brief period of time of getting to know each other and, of course, the mutual discernment if each other was the right one. There'd have been some clarity of intention, but also measures of uncertainty. There would have been hope to be sure, but maybe also a sense of everyone holding their breath just a little bit as you all took leaps of faith, hoping everything was going to work out okay. But now it's been over a year and a half since your mutual ministry began. And let's be honest, the pandemic has in fact converted time into dog years, right? So some days it maybe feels a little bit more like it's been seven years or so. So more than the electricity of a wedding ceremony, today might feel a little bit more like a renewal of vows. Oh, there is still the anticipation of future hope and promise. But somehow now today, there is a sense of a more grounded confidence, more surety of purpose, and of the rightness of your partnership. There are still dreams, but you've already rolled up your sleeves and gotten to work. And because of the pandemic, it was a hard year's work. Today, as you reflect on your relationship with each other, the ministry accomplished already, and the life shared you all, now with clarity of hindsight's 2020 vision, affirm that you are still saying yes, and that you still want to. Today, you commit to each other with a knowing that was mostly hope two years ago, but now already has become a trusted touchstone in a deeply loving reality. The poet Robert Bly captures something of this in his poem called The Third Body. Bly writes, a man and a woman sit near each other and they do not long at this moment to be older or younger or born in any other nation or any other time or any other place. They are content to be where they are, talking or not talking. Their breaths together feed someone whom we do not know. The man sees the way his fingers move. He sees her hands close around a book she hands to him. They obey a third body that they share in common. They have promised to love that body. Age may come, parting may come, death will come. A man and a woman sit near each other. As they breathe, they feed someone we do not know, someone we know of, whom we have never seen. In this poem, Robert Bly speaks of the marriage of these two people, the relationship that exists as the unseen third body, but is an entity, a being that they love just as they love each other. And in their love for each other, they have pledged their obedience to the relationship. They have promised their love, not only to each other, but to the relationship that is so much more than the sum of their two parts. I think this poem speaks beautifully today, now, to the third body that is your covenant with each other. 
And it also offers a helpful image as we reflect today on, uh, as we reflect on today's gospel text. Today's story of a dust up between Mary and Martha and Jesus's gentle reprimand to Martha is almost always considered by biblical commentators and preachers for the contrast it appears to draw between the two sisters. The contrast between the active productive Martha and the quiet contemplative Mary. Or the contrast between a frustrated, agitated and distracted Martha and a calm, peaceful, mindful Mary. Or the contrast between Martha, Martha the self-centered martyr and Mary, the selfless, mindful disciple of Jesus. From there, preachers and teachers tease out many important lessons from the story, bits of wisdom about the importance of balance in ministry or in life, or of how any ministry of outreach requires a discipline of prayer to be sustained, or of keeping one's focus on Jesus so that a church's mission doesn't, dissolve, doesn't devolve into activity that only serves egos, or as an imperative to patterns of healthy communication rather than the passive aggressiveness of Martha, Martha's banging around in the kitchen. Often enough, women preachers will try to rescue Martha, affirming her purpose and offering hospitality and service, even if she has gotten a bit carried away and imagining into what kind of chaos life would devolve if the world was full of dreamy-eyed Marys. Or they hold up a Martha mirror to frazzled and harried women, young mothers, new professionals, women balancing careers and families, older women, stuck in established patterns of self-sacrifice who are long overdue to tend to their own inner lives. Curiously, I have found none of these last lessons ever to have been written by men for men caught in these same struggles. Anyway, these interpretations and lessons are not unhelpful and many, although not all, are faithfully and hopefully drawn from the text. There are probably several that would serve you all well as you commit today to continue to live, love, be obedient to and breathe life into the covenant that is your third body. Sustaining your missional outreach with disciplined prayer practices would be an important takeaway. So is staying focused on God's purposes as you see them expressed in Jesus Christ as a corrective to the human tendency to become unhelpfully ego involved, forcing the church to be an extension of your own personalities, desires and needs for place and status. Jesus's admonition to choose the good part, to be disciplined against distractions is always a helpful guide in all matters of communal discernment. But sometimes the trouble with all of these studies in the contrast between Mary and Martha is how they establish a dualistic frame around the story, creating a strict either or. Either you are like Mary or you are like Martha and one is clearly better than the other. Even the translators of this passage contribute to this dualism, to this either or frame. We hear Jesus telling Martha that just one thing is needful and that Mary has chosen the better part. The better part suggesting that Martha has somehow chosen its opposite, the implied worst. When actually a proper translation here would be that Mary has chosen the good part. Not a better one, but a good one. The various interpretations, as well as this particular translation, all betray the human inclination to seek comfort in categories that help us organize our experiences, good or bad, worthy or unworthy, better or worse, people, places, things to accept or reject, experiences to which to aspire or to avoid. They also betray our inclination to want to draw clear lessons from the scripture, to want to find the moral compass that will point us in the right ethical direction. They reflect our own desire and 
Make no mistake, this is almost always a fundamentally faithful desire to hear the words of Jesus and respond as Jesus would have us do. There's nothing wrong with any of that. It's just that the scripture is so much more than a collection of morality tales. And the binary, the either or frame, has us looking at fingers and hands on books. It distracts us from the third body present. The story of Mary and Martha follows that of the Good Samaritan in the Gospel of Luke. The two episodes are intentionally linked by Luke to expand on Jesus's response to a young lawyer who asked what must be done to inherit eternal life. The answer to that question was to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus tells the, long, the young lawyer that yes, he has answered rightly. Jesus says, do this and you will live. This is the teaching Luke wants to amplify in his gospel. Love God, love your neighbor. This is the way to fullness of life. So Luke begins first with what it means, what it looks like to love one's neighbor through Jesus telling the story of the Good Samaritan. Then Luke follows with the story of Mary and Martha, his illustration of what it means, what it looks like to love God. From Luke's perspective, that's the point of placing the story of Mary and Martha where he did, linked as it is to the story of the Good Samaritan. Each story an exemplar of what is needed to inherit eternal life. That is to say, what is essential for living in and with and out of an awareness of the presence of God in all things. What is essential or needful for living into eternal life does not refer to what one must do in this life to receive life in the hereafter. Rather, it means living in one's own life with whole beings and aware of the divine quality given it by God's presence. The young lawyer's answer to the question of how to inherit this kind of life, the answer Jesus said was the answer by which the young lawyer would live, was not just to love God, but to love God with all heart, all strength, all mind, and all soul. Our capacity for this kind of love, a love issuing from our whole beings, is what the story of Mary and Martha present. Episcopal priest, writer, and contemplative Cynthia Bourgeau, in her work Centering Prayer and in Inner, Inner Awakening, writes about spiritual transformation as in part an awakening to different levels of awareness by which we apprehend the world around us and in us. Most of us, most of the time, live at the level of ordinary awareness. It is as human beings, the place our minds normally function. It is where we know ourselves as unique persons with distinctive qualities, capacities, and needs but it is also where we know anxiety and stress, where we make judgments, where our egos prevail, concern to establish who we are in the world and how to maintain those things that give us a sense of identity, of place and of security. Spiritual awareness, says Bourgeau, is also in every one of us, but we are not usually so much in touch with it. Instead, it tends to touch us in moments of overpowering emotion, like when we are suddenly moved to tears watching a sunset or maybe a sunrise, or seeing an anticipated newborn infant for the first time, or hearing particularly glorious music, sitting alone in a quiet sanctuary, or taking the bread and wine with others in community. Bourgeau writes, and I quote her here, that nostalgia for the divine sweeps over us and we are left trembling before the presence of a mystery almost more vivid and beautiful than we can bear. Unlike ordinary awareness, which is self-conscious and sees the world as subjects and objects, our sense of spiritual awareness more often comes through our intuition and imagination. And 
with an innate sense of belonging. The third level of awareness, divine awareness, is that to which our spiritual awareness can lead us if we pay attention. It is the deepest place, not where we experience a sense of belonging to something greater than ourselves, but rather we know our own being and the divine being to be mysteriously interwoven. It is that place of which 16th century Meister Eckhart writes, there is in the soul a something in which God dwells, and there is in the soul a something in which the soul dwells in God. Contemporary contemplative Thomas Merton described that something in this way. At the center of our being is a point of nothingness, which is untouched by sin and illusion, a point of pure truth, a point or spark which belongs entirely to God, which is never at our disposal, but from which God disposes of our lives which is inaccessible to the fantasies of our own mind or the brutality of our own will. This little point of nothingness and of absolute poverty is the pure glory of God written in us. It is like a pure diamond blazing with the invisible light of heaven. It is in everybody and if we could see it, we would see these billions of points of light coming together in the face and blaze of a sun that would make all the darkness and cruelty of life vanish completely. I have no program for this seeing. It is only given. Today, I wish for us to see the, Mary, the story of Mary and Martha as the story of Mary and Martha and Jesus. No dualism, but a collection of the three not trapped in the binary of either Mary or Martha. I wish for us to consider the text not as an object of our analysis, an effort to draw from it a lesson, and not with misplaced pride about how we are like Mary, or with guilt or shame about how we are like Martha, or what percentage of each we are like some crazy Facebook test. Rather, I wish for us to see the story with all three characters as a reflection of our inner lives, operating by necessity and design always with the capacities for all of these awarenesses. We are within Martha, in our ordinary awareness, the awareness required for most of our daily living and which blesses us with a sense of purpose, uniqueness and distinctiveness even as it might derail us, keep us up at the surface of our lives with its distractions. We are within Mary, in our capacity for spiritual awareness when in the presence of something greater than ourselves, in the possibility that distractions and distractibility can be, can and will be overtaken, that we can command our attention to spiritual things, that we can be lifted outside ourselves and know ourselves to be carried in the hands of God, held on the heart of God. And we are within Jesus, in our God-given capacity for an awareness of that something within our souls. We are Jesus, the indwelling presence of divine and the one able to be in perfect attunement to it. This was a spectacular choice of text for the occasion of this day on this day that feels like the renewal of vows. Martha, Mary, and Jesus are before you like Rublev's icon of the Trinity, reflecting the dynamics of the truth of your individual inner lives, as well as that of your relationships, the dynamic and life-giving interplay between ordinary spiritual and divine awarenesses. But as one, they are the third body that sits with you at this table. Today, you affirm a covenant between Pastor TJ, Union Congregational Church, and the Sunrise Association. That covenant itself becomes a third body you share in common, which you today promise in a formal way to love and be obedient to. But there is also the third body, the constellation of awarenesses to which 
your covenant will bear witness, and which I pray you will also love and be obedient to, seeking for yourselves and on behalf of each other, the divine presence, creating the spaces where you all individually and collectively are persistently drawn to the deeper and deeper places, that you will encourage each other to love God with your whole beings, with strength and mind and heart and soul, that your breaths will feed this body as it feeds you. Do this and you will live. Amen. Amen. All good gifts come from you, O God. You have given us life and new life in Christ. As you have given us gifts, so we offer our gifts that we may be gifts to one another.
please join me in the prayer of dedication. Universal God, accept the offerings of your people. May these gifts be used to spread the good news concerning Jesus Christ, who prayed that we all be one. Amen. <clears throat> the Sunrise Association of the Main Conference of the United Church of Christ greets you in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church in heaven and on earth. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Let us look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was waiting endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, has called Teresa Lynn Mack as its pastor and teacher, and respectfully request that the Sunrise Association install her in this ministry among us, according to the faith and order of the United Church of Christ. The Sunrise Association has reviewed the request of the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ. We have prayerfully examined TJ and we are pleased to install her as your pastor and teacher. TJ, servant of God, we invite you to come forward as a sign of your acceptance of the call to this office. Installation is the action of an association of the United Church of Christ in cooperation with a local church. Installation confirms and celebrates the covenantal relationship among a local church, its pastor and teacher, and the United Church of Christ. Installation is a sign that these covenantal partners are committed to share mutually in the mission of the United Church of Christ and of the ecumenical church. And now hear these words from the Apostle Paul. We beg you, our brothers and sisters, to pay proper respect to those who work among you, who guide and instruct you in the Christian life. Treat them with the greatest respect and love because of the work they do. Be at peace among yourselves. And to Pastor TJ, we urge you, our sister, warn the idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with all. And to all of you present, see that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but at all times make it your aim to do good to one another and to all people. Be joyful always pray at all times, be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants of you in your life in Christ Jesus. Amen. To the congregation, dear friends, the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ, has declared that having gathered under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it has called TJ to minister in this place as a pastor and teacher, and that it now receives her as appointed by God for this ministry. The Sunrise Association of the United Church of Christ has declared that she has met all the necessary conditions 
for installation to this office. TJ, to you. TJ, seeing that you are called to ordained ministry by the grace of God and that the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ, has been led to call you as pastor and teacher, are you willing to enter this covenant with its members who are one in Christ with us in the Sunrise Association? I am willing, and I promise to serve this church faithfully, preaching and teaching the word of God, administering the sacraments, and fulfilling the pastoral office according to the faith and order of the United Church of Christ. Members of the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ. For those who are able, rise in spirit and affirm your covenant with your pastor and teacher. We, the members of the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ, receive TJ as our pastor and teacher, promising to labor with him in the of the gospel, gospel and, and to give her due honor and support. We gather, we gather with her and with the United Church, Church of Christ as a sign of our mutual ministry in, in Christ's, Christ's name. And now all of you members of the Sunrise in Association. Christ. Members of the Sunrise Association, will those who are able rise in spirit and affirm your covenant with the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ, and its pastor and teacher, T.J. Mack. We, we the members, members of, of the Sunrise Association of the United Church of Christ, gather with you, the people and the pastor and teacher of the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ, as a sign of our covenant and in celebration of our mutual ministry in Christ's name. Amen. Let us pray. All wise and present God, you have called your servants to make promises before you now enable us to keep our vows that we may remain steadfast in faith and fruitful in every good work. Bless, we pray, your daughter and servant, TJ, to whom the care of your people in this church is now committed. Pour out your Holy Spirit on her on the people of the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ, and on all the churches of the Sunrise Association, that our mutual ministry may be served with all faithfulness, diligence, courage, and joy. <laughs> Grant us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind, Make our ministry a means of awakening the careless, strengthening the faithful, comforting the afflicted, building up your church, and turning all people to you. Guard us against the snares of temptation that we may be kept pure in heart, fervent in spirit, and valiant against evil. And at the last, by your grace, Receive us in your eternal home, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ reigns in glory, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I am so happy to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, and on behalf of the Sunrise Association of the Main Conference of the United Church of Christ, I declare you, TJ, duly installed as pastor and teacher of the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ. 
Thank you. Thank you. Praise us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen. 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 Beloveds, the Holy Spirit is powerfully generous in borrowing any and all available voices when holy words need a saying. Sometimes the available voices are in pulpits. Sometimes they are at keyboards. Sometimes they are in capitals or classrooms or kitchen tables. Sometimes the available voices are in the front of a cabin of a commercial airline preparing for takeoff. Indeed, seven days a week, hour by hour, the Holy Spirit borrows the voices of flight attendants around the world to say, if the oxygen masks drop, put your own on before you help anyone else. On every flight, this litany is repeated, which proves to us this is something God yearns for us, that no flight skips these words. The oxygen masks drop. Put yours on first before you help another. Otherwise, you will fall down and pass out. <laughs> Reverend TJ, dear partner in the gospel, I charge you. That's great. Put your own oxygen mask on first That's good. before you help anyone else. Saints of the Sunrise Association, saints of Hancock Church, I charge you as well. Put your own oxygen masks on first before you help anyone else. It sounds so wrong if you were like me, schooled in the sort of sacrificial servanthood. This just sounds wrong. Of course, I'm going to help everyone else first and then take my mask. And that only leaves us flat on the ground. Put your own oxygen masks on first. I'm going to tell you a story from the beginning of my first parish ministry a very long time ago when I was blind. <laughs> I had had four years of theological education, four years of supervised practice of ministry, two units of clinical pastoral education. And I was terrified. And I went to the gentleman who was, if you will, the dean of my association. And I called him Reverend Voley. And I said, Reverend Voley, what should I do? And his brown eyes sparkled and he had a Christ lit smile. And he said, all you got to do is love them. Because if you love them and they know you love them, you can make all the mistakes you'll make and it will be all right because they know you love them. And if you don't love them and they know that you don't love them, it won't matter how smart you are or how many scrumptious sermons and programs you launch, it won't work because they know you don't love them. Just love them. <sighs> Reverend TJ, dear partner in the gospel, I commend to you and I commend to you, dear saints of Hancock Church, the composition of a love story that you have begun and will now continue. 
as your ministry bears rich fruit because you have chosen to love one another. <sighs> Reverend T.J., dear partner in the gospel, I commend to you in the words of every gifted light attendant on the planet, breathe, breathe. Draw deeply from your own oxygen mask, from the mercies and blessings and gifts of the Holy Spirit, showered and showering and to be showered upon you. And with great joy and with great love, serve the saints in your care. Thanks be to God. As I pondered what a charge to the congregation might be, I also was, have been pondering what it means to move from a position of pastor to being part of a congregation. As Kate was saying, when is Deb coming back? And I, I was drawn to the words of Jesus to Martha. There is need of only one thing. There is need of only one thing. Whether it be as pastor, whether it be as part of a community of faith, the local church, whether it me, whether it is being part of God's great creation, there is need of only one thing. What is essential? What is essential for us to be signs and witnesses and of God's presence to, to somehow with our lives embody what it is to be God's love in this world. One of the joys, oddly enough, of, of the pandemic season for me, particularly in this position as associate conference minister has been to see how God's love is working in spite of and through the pandemic. The, the, the words and the rhetoric are sometimes around when do we reopen the building? When can we come back to worship? But my experience and our experience as, as Christ Church is that we have never been closed. Never been closed. We continue to be signs and witnesses of God's love, to embody God's love in the world in, in many in creative ways. I was talking with members of a search committee in one small congregation who, who were astonished at how powerful the sign of the building was even when nobody was in it. Because for the community it meant that God was present, that God's love was there and all the day in day out things that the people of God were doing. There is need of only one thing, to love God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our strength, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And that is the antidote for everything that divides us, for all that tears at us, heart and soul. It is the shared vocation we have as people of God. I, I remember that in the first 100 years of, of the Christian movement, the Christian church, that there was this letter that a Roman official wrote to, to the emperor in Rome about these strange 
Christians who, as the official wrote in the letter, as I'm recalling it, said, these people are so odd. They not only love their own people, their own poor, they love ours as well. There is only one thing that is needed to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength and to love our neighbor, our enemy as ourselves. That is our vocation, that is our charge. And in this time of strangeness, of the rhetoric of social isolation, of distance, that is what we do. And that is what I give thanks for. Amen. TJ, before we sing our final hymn, on behalf of the church council and all uh, members of the congregation, we want to uh, thank you so much for being here and say that we are so excited to continue this journey with you. And we just have a small gift for you. Let's sing. <laughs>
Where are we going to dinner? <laughs> For the cake. Yes. Where's yes. <laughs> Dan? <laughs> yes. That was beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Sally. Really nice. Beautiful. Good to see you all. A day, a day to remember. Oh, definitely. Very special. Yeah, they're they're leaving. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>